Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on when you're watching this video. Welcome to another episode of On The Road with Luando. By the way, if you're wondering when I, where I've been, just um, click on this link right up here, and then you'll know exactly what I've been up to. So, but if you don't know, well, I was, I'm actually studying, so I've finished my exams. So now it's time for me to get back on the road with you. So cue in the music. In today's episode, actually, we are going to the place where history was made on the 3rd of December in 1967. So as you walk in actually through the door of the museum, the first thing actually that you're going to do is obviously to do the security sign up. And then from there on, you're actually going to meet with your tour guide. The first room actually that you're presented with, actually, it's one where if you don't know the context of the story, it might be quite confusing because you see a back of a car that is actually inside a room and you're wondering what does that actually mean? And you'll get to actually to see, um, as you go through the tour, you'll actually get to know why that particular car is there. Um, in case you didn't know, actually, on the 3rd of December, 1967, as fate would have it, three people from all different walks of life would somehow be part of medical history. The first person is Professor Christian Barnett, a surgeon actually who was based at the Khotiske Hospital at the time. And then at the, at the time, a 25-year-old Denise Taval, um, and then also a businessman actually from, who, from Cape Town who was um, Louis Waskanski, Three different people, but somehow history will connect all these people together. This is more than just a museum. It's a time capsule of one of the greatest medical achievements in history. A place where you can step into the very rooms where history was made. The Heart of Cape Town Museum takes you on a deeply immersive journey into the events leading up to that fateful night in 1967. As you walk through the museum, you're transported back in time, surrounded by authentic artifacts, medical equipment and incredible detailed life-size recreations of the operating room, complete with the wax figures of the surgeons, nurses and even the patient himself. I'll also like to warn those who are squirmish or who might actually find the next images actually quite more disturbing even though it's actually not real it's actually um, they've used uh, what you call those things they've used prosthetics actually to recreate um, the animals that you're gonna see um, in the next clip that actually depict uh, what it looked like when they were practicing um, this complicated surgery um, on dogs before they actually performed it on humans. This was only invented in 1963, so literally four years before the transplant, as this research started. Let's talk about the five most fascinating facts about the world's first heart transplant. In the 1960s, transplant surgery was considered highly experimental and many thought it was impossible to transport a human heart. Professor Christian Barnard, after years of research, and practice on animal models decided to take the risk and in doing so revolutionized modern medicine. The heart used in the first heart transplant came from Denise Deval, a 25-year-old woman at the time who suffered a fatal brain injury in a car accident. Her father made the brave decisions to donate her heart 
an act of generosity that would change the future of organ transplantation forever. The recipient, Luis Washkansky, was a 53-year-old man suffering from end-stage heart disease. After receiving Denise's heart, he lived for 18 days. While he eventually succumbed to pneumonia due to his weakened immune system, the operation itself was a success, proving that a transplanted human heart could function in another body. Just a month later, in January 1968, Professor Bannon performed another transplant on Philip Bleiberg, who survived over 19 months, a major improvement that encouraged the doctors worldwide to pursue heart transplantation. Today, over 5,000 heart transplants are performed worldwide every year, and all thanks to the work that pioneered right here in Cape Town. Professor Barnard's breakthrough opened the doors for modern transplant techniques, improved survival rates, and changing countless lives. One of the highlights of the museum is the actual operating room, preserved exactly as it was on the 3rd of December 1967. You can stand where Professor Barnard stood see where the original surgical instruments used in the operation and feel the intensity of that historical moment. In this room actually, it for me, I found it um, as someone actually who recently had an op. It was quite surreal actually to walk in there. Um, they have these um, Madame Tussauds. To the French people, please do not, uh, I'm sure I am butchering them and the word, um, the phrase Madame Tussauds, um, but if, if you don't know about it, actually, this is where they create actually this real life uh, looking like um, statues actually with, uh, it's almost like flesh. And as you walk through the theater, you get to see um, Professor Barnard and his team as where they were, they were situated, where you have one operating room and then you just walk across and then you go to the other. And then this actually room also has a viewing room. Um, of which I think at the time, um, the public and also the, the specialists who were also learning and the students will get to watch the operation as it was happening. At that time, at that day, actually, I don't think actually there was someone who was there watching because it happened um, late in the evening on the 3rd of December, um, the operation. But as you walk through and then you bump some of this, actually, not obviously bump, but when you feel, it feels so real and also you see uh, where they depict also like blood and everything and then you can imagine and now when we are told to walk from one end to the other where you actually can imagine them holding this heart, um, Denise's heart um, to, Lu uh, to Luis it's, it's, yeah, it was quite interesting Interestingly, actually, some of the things that you'll see when you are throughout the tour, we, so you'll actually also watch a video series that was actually produced where they also delve in into the life of Dr. Christian Barnard uh, and how his life actually changed um, after this operation. And he also does touch on also the excellency and someone who history has almost forgotten throughout this um, era, which was um, Professor Hamilton Mackey. And then actually from there, as you're going through, the, and then after you watch the movie, you're gonna go through his office and you're also gonna see the Denise's room, the one which was donated um, by his father, um, where you get to actually to see, learn, learn more about her life. And then you also go into a room, a room where you, go, you get to see basically all the letters actually that were received from all over the world um, to the hospital and to Dr. Christian Barnard. And what I really liked about it is that they didn't, did not filter it. They did not also only share the good stories, basically, of how people felt um, regarding um, the procedure. Um, just know, so that I don't actually spoil it for you, but also just to give you context, is that because at the time there was a belief that someone, in order for them to, to in order to perform this procedure, someone had to be declared dead um, or they're not alive. In Dennis's case is that she was brain dead. So technically, it, she was dead, but she was also not dead. Um, so 
then they that's actually when Dennis's father actually gave the permission um, for them to perform this procedure even though actually all over the world they felt that actually there were some ethical reasons made that maybe the team did not consider but this is actually what led us to today where a heart transplant is actually a normal procedure where people actually get to after the, um, the operation get to live for many decades to come As you know, Cape Town is a beautiful city, but for me, this is one of the places where I believe actually people should actually come and visit. The hospital is actually situated in a suburb called um, Observatory in Cape Town, one of the most um, oldest and also historical locations that you'll find in Cape Town. It's not picturesque like where you'll find the beaches, but for me, it's actually one thing that I believe if you do actually visit to Cape Town, please make a booking to the hospital where you actually get to see. It's one of the few places actually where you get to see medical history preserved in the way that it was preserved um, at the hospital. So once again, actually, I hope that actually this, you find this video much more informative and actually worth your time. And as a way also, again, just one final ask from my side to you. Cape Town is a beautiful city, also full of stories. And for me, this one actually really touched me to my, really touched my heart. No pun intended right there. Um, but again, I'm glad actually this I was actually able to do this tour and I hope that actually one day that you're also able to do um, Do it. So as again, thank you for watching my content and I hope it's actually worth your while And I'd just like to ask a favor so that to make sure that actually this video actually gets to reach more people Is by actually liking this content and number two actually commenting below if did you know actually that the first world heart transplant was actually um, done in Cape Town and has have you actually visited the Khutuskir hospital before or seen it. Also thirdly, share this video actually on your platforms, uh, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram or TikTok, um, so that actually more people can actually find value in it. But anyway, this has been On The Road with Luando. Stay curious and keep exploring. Bye-bye.